I'm going to start off with, this is, this is quite an, an honour and, and very interesting for me to be here. The reason being, last year I was this close to buying an original a110. Oh really? Oh, wow. Very very okay. close. I ended up going down a different route because I'm not quite ready for a, a classic car yet. Okay. But when I heard about this project, I was thinking, you know what, this is your, so exciting. Your eyes lit up. So exciting. But what's the main reason behind launching a sports car? Clearly, we, we had an asset. We mm. had an asset which was Alpine. The history, the people, the factory. Yes. Which you know as, a, yeah, as an A110 yeah, fan, yeah. I'm not going to bore you with all that. We had an asset. Yes. And we had to do something with that at some stage. We also clearly want to pull the image of the group towards, I'm not going to say this premium segment because everyone's sure. saying premium these days, yep. but we need to be there with products and brands that make people dream. Absolutely. Uh, and this, yep. we're in the dream. Very much so. I mean, I can I fully agree that when a group has a, a, a flagship or a sports car, it inherently puts cool under everything. You know, it just helps give the brand so much aspiration, yeah. you know? Um, so when I heard about this, I was like, you know, this is great. Back in the game and to revitalize a brand like this is f fabulous. Yeah. So from your point of view, what are you most proud of? I'm going to say those four numbers again, 1080. It's yeah. the weight of the car, wet weight. Yes. Um, and we're, you know, stupidly proud of that. And the whole engineering Fabulous. team, we're just, yes. you know, we're, we're, we're chuffed to bits about that. I number. mean, and it is important to say wet weight because a lot of figures these days are asterisks dry, you know, but to be a wet weight, which basically means all, you know, full tank of fuel. Absolutely. Fluids. Etc. Everything um, ready to go. We start ready it up, to go. go that it. is a genuinely, especially in this day and age when we are quite con constricted now by safety regulations. We have to have all the airbags and tech in there to be able to achieve a weight of that is fantastic. Absolutely. So, and this car we're well sitting done. in. This yep. is the premier edition. Okay. Uh, which has got some nice features on it. A tiny little bit heavier. Okay. Eleven hundred and three kilos. This okay. particular car. Right. So twenty three kilos because we've got. Nice big wheels, we've got the navigation, we've got nice leather, we've got nice carpet. So it's Beautiful. a little bit more civilized. Yes. But even that car, we only allowed ourselves 23 little kilos yeah. uh, to do the car we're sitting in here. It's fantastic. And again, to come back to the wet weights, yes. you know, that's important for us. We could have announced, you know, some silly dry sure. weight numbers, but yeah, yeah. we want to give you real, real numbers. World. And when you guys weigh the car, because you will, sure. you're going to find the yeah, numbers we're talking either. about. Absolutely. I guess this kind of ties in with weight too, and with this being a more driver focused car, why is it that you opted for the paddle shift yeah. gearbox as opposed to a good old fashioned stick manual? Shift. Yeah. First answer I'm going to give you might surprise you. Go on. The DCT yep. as a full system mm -hmm. is lighter. Is it really? Yeah. No, a lot of people say, oh. Well, see, this is something, see, I'm learning something here. I, I always thought that a twin clutch had a heavier unit, but. You're right. If okay. I take a manual transmission, uh -huh. the box, uh -huh. and a DCT, yeah. it's heavier, but I, I said system. Okay, for sure. So, if you look at this central console, yes, I've got no shifter, I've got no parking brake. That means I can do this fantastic flying center console, yes. which is really light, Beautiful. because that aluminium here, yes, it's not just for sure, that's the structure. Ah, so I can take kilos out here. Wow, Secondly, I take out this clutch pedal yeah. and everything that goes behind it. When you do the system comparison, yeah. DCT is lighter. It's lighter. Okay. Wow. Now okay. The second fantastic. question. Yeah. Okay. Weight is good, etc. We agree that there's a small percentage of super enthusiast customers who sure. are always going to like the third pedal. For and sure, the stick shift. yeah, sure. But 95% of customers yeah. are going to love this. Mm -hmm. We wanted to design a car that's not just for a professional race driver mm -hmm. or you know very experienced motoring journalists mm -hmm. who have the, the time and the energy and the sure. luck to spend yeah. a lot of time behind cars sure. on the limited. Yeah, yeah. We designed the car for guys like me. I'm, you a, I'm a, jump in and go. I'm a I'm an enthusiastic driver, uh -huh. but I'm not a professional driver. And DCT is a great solution for me because it's got that Jekyll and Hyde character. I can okay. put it in, in the automatic mode, yeah. but on a circuit and, chill. Yep. and track mode, yeah. I'm faster with a DCT 100%. than a stick shift. 100%. And 95% of customers oh, will be. Now something else I need to comment and congratulate you on is the oh. interior. Ah, so normally, so I saw the concept and prototype of this and it's not far off. I mean, it, it like as Thank far you. as interior, designs and feel go it genuinely feels like i've stepped back into to the concept and that's a rare thing these days because normally when you launch these concepts you're like yeah but well, what's it really going to look like and it really looks fabulous yeah, yeah. it's beautiful well I'm, I'm i'm really pleased you say that because when we showed the alpine vision show car mm -hmm. in february you know we said it's 80 percent representative of the real thing yes in fact 
we knew it was 95% represent. Wow. Okay. We, we didn't want to disappoint you guys. Yeah. Um, so we worked very hard to keep the nice features we saw. Yeah. A couple of things we took out because you can't pass homologation requirements with them. Sure. But we're pretty close, you know, yeah. especially if you look at these seats. Well, one huge thing, the difference between a concept and production is seats. I mean, you know, so much regs these days around how seats yep. should be and stress loads they have to take having airbags in, but you've managed to keep the fundamental shape looking stunning. There's lots of nice features we could talk mm. about. The seats, I'm mm. particularly proud of. We developed those with a, an Italian company called Sabelt. The guys are out there, they're really proud. Yes. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, 13.1 kilograms each seat. Well, thank you very much for your time and congratulations on a beautiful car. Thank you again, I'm glad and you I, like I, it. I believe I've got the, the honor of being invited to drive it when you eventually do the uh, press drive, so looking, very, very excited. Looking forward to Thanks it. Thanks very much. Thank you. So there you have it, the Alpine A110. Genuinely a little car that I'm really excited about. I think this thing's 96% aluminium, so it's very light, it's very compact, it's just four and a half seconds to 60. Of course, it's going to have a really low center of gravity. And interestingly, the first models are being made in a limited edition of just 1,955. And by the end of the year, they're going to be available in Europe, but it's not until early 2018 that they're going to be available in the UK. Oh, and by the way, it's 245 brake horsepower. And it's starting at 58,500 euros. So at that weight and that price, it's going to be a proper little weapon.